Now, a bit back on Drive Tribe, I made a video called something like 12 things I don't like about my Tesla Model S. And they were all fairly minor things, to be honest, like the noise the boot makes when it goes up, the typeface used on the boot, a couple of aspects of the screen and so on. But I didn't know about this one, otherwise I would have included it. This is something I hate. It's a bit boring, this, but I'm going to have to explain it all. The Tesla has two batteries. It's got the great big battery under the floor, which powers the car. It also has here in the front, the front trunk, a conventional 12 volt car battery, which keeps all the systems alive and the memory in the computer and all that sort of usual rubbish makes the car unlock. That, because I hadn't used the car for a while, had gone flat and I couldn't get in. Now you might think, well, why does that battery go flat when it's got a great big battery and it's permanently plugged into the charger in my garage, even though it's not being used because of lockdown? Very good question. But what Tesla have explained to me is, yes, the car charges conventionally through the cable and that charger also, via the electronics, keeps that battery charged. But when the big battery is fully charged, the charging system turns off and it doesn't keep topping that one up. And that one eventually, because it's running the computer and so on in the background, goes flat. I couldn't get into the car because the battery's flat, so the doors won't unlock and the handles won't come out, etc. I can't open the frunk because that is electrically operated from the key. I thought the battery had run out in the key, which it does quite quickly, so I put a new one in. It wasn't that. I rang up Tesla and they said you can get into the front, but to get into the front without using the plipper, because the battery's flat, you have to pull the two emergency releases which are in the wheel arches. And to get to those, you have to actually lever the internal plastic trim off the wheel arch and expose these little cable pulls, one on each side, so you have to do both. That eventually releases that. Then, when you're in here, you have to get to the battery, which is buried under here, which involves partly removing those two panels, taking this big panel out, and then taking this panel out, which has some very brittle clips on it. One of them has snapped inevitably. And that is, oh God, that is still connected by bits of pipes, which are part of the drain hole system to take water away if it gets under the bonnet. Hang on, I've got to prop it up with a piece of, bit of cardboard box to keep, to keep it free of the, crocodile clips on the charger and then when I've lifted that up you have to take this bit of ducting out which is part of the heating system and then finally you get to the battery now unfortunately I could see this end of the battery and I thought ah I can go on to there and an earth point on the car but actually that's the earth terminal I needed to get to that one the positive one so finally I'm in and I'm trickle charging the battery when it comes back to life the car hopefully will start operating again what this needs if you're watching Elon Musk or anybody else involved with Tesla, just in case this happens to other people, it needs a permanent one of these charging port attached. I put these on all my motorcycles for exactly this reason, so that if they're parked up and I'm not using them, I can plug a trickle charger in and maintain the battery condition. That, I could do this and I will do it, wired up to the battery, and that bit just sticking out there or in a convenient place, make a little hole. That's what it needs, because otherwise, to charge the battery, you have to dismantle the car. It was about an hour's work. And frankly, it's pissed me off like, comment, subscribe. Why is it making that noise?